today. Hopefully everyone can see that. There we are. People still coming. Good morning if you're just arriving. Lovely to see you. <laughs> you got blinded by my background, oh dear. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'm glad you can see everything. Uh, what's the link number to this? I don't know if I have a link number. Uh, <laughs> there are so many people. Yes. <laughs> good morning. Here we go. All right, we'll get started. I know people are still coming in. Um, but yeah, what we're going to do, we're going to go around the world. We're going to go around the world using the alphabet. So we're going to start with a country beginning with A, and then next week we'll do a country beginning with B. And I'm hoping that we're all back to normal before I have to find a country beginning with X, because, well, I don't know any. So yeah, there you go. That's the aim. Um, Australia is a big country. Um, we're going to have, I've, I've just made um, a template so that what you guys can do each time is uh, take the template and fill it in with information. I'll get that put up on, I don't know, Facebook or something. Um, but the idea is we're going to look at the same combination of things for each country that we go to. So here we are, let's put that up here. So we're going to have a look at where the country is. That's the location. La -la -la location. Um, so we're going to see where it is in the world, where it fits in. We're going to have a look at the physical geography. So what makes the country up? Um, some information about its neighbours and high points and low points and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's basically our map work, those two there. Um, then we're going to have a look at the wildlife in the country. Um, what kind of funky creatures live there? birds, animals, etc. Then we're going to have a quick look at the government, which sounds really boring, but it will give us a basic idea of um, how the country is run, whether it's got a good government, a bad government, a weird government, um, and you know there are different, big different forms of government in different countries. So yeah. And then we're going to have a look at economics and development, uh, which basically breaks down to, is it a rich country? Is it a poor country? Does it have some problems there or is it doing all right? And finally, for each country, we're going to take a look at the culture, which is, well, everything else, all the stuff that the humans are doing, the food, the fashions, the music, the TV, the films, um, all that kind of stuff. So that's our plan for today. We're going to look at those things for Australia and get ourselves an idea of the country. Now, give me a shout out in the chat, please, if you have ever been to Australia. I haven't, but I'd be interested to see if anyone has. Uh, no, no. Hmm. Uh, you have a relative there. That's cool. Happy Sam. Ah, yeah. uh, Jack, your mum has. That's cool. Oh, and you're going on holiday there, River. That's very good. Ah, uh, uh, yes, a few mums have. That's good. Uh, and some people have family that... No, there there are big spiders there. This is true. Ah. Are oh, your godparents live there? That's cool. Oh, and Arya, you've been to Sydney. That's very cool. And to Ayers Rock. Ooh. Oh, someone's been to Ayers Rock. I want to hug a lizard. I'm not sure if hugging a wild lizard in Australia is a good idea, but hey, we'll see. I'm sure there are some very nice lizards out there. <laughs> All right, well, that's good. So some people have been and some people know people have been. So that's cool. Um, and lots of people want to go there. That's good, too. Um, so Australia is, let's look at it where, at its place in the world here. Let's find its location. Now, I suppose since this is the first one, I can't really assume too much. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the world, the map of the world. And we can see here that the world is broken down into seven continents. We've got, we'll start at home, we've got Europe here. Then we've got Asia, which is the biggest of continents, which comes all the way down to here, all the pinky purpley colours. Then we've got Africa over here, right in that slap bang in the centre of our map here. Um, we've got North America in the blues, we've got South America in the greens, and then we've got Antarctica in the yellow. Um, Australasia is our continent down here, which is really only made up of a few countries. There's lots of little islands, um, like Fiji and things. But what we're looking at is. Um, but what we're looking at 
is uh, a continent made up of just a few countries. Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea are the main ones, uh, and then lots of islands around. So Australia pretty much takes up the entirety of Australasia, that continent. It's so big, it almost is its own continent. Uh, Kai, you are in Asia, aren't you? Kai is right here over in India. That's good. Um, uh, have we got anyone else around the country or, or is everyone else in the UK today? Um, we've got some, lots in England, of course. Uh -huh. How many countries are there, Lisa? That's a good question. I think it, it's difficult because sometimes, sometimes people call themselves countries when they're not countries and some people, sometimes people say that you're not allowed to be a country. So it gets a bit political, but there's just under 200 at the last count, I believe. Difficult to give an exact number, though. Uh, I think the UN say there's something like 190. Um, I mean, if you're up for it, you could always uh, try and count them right now, but that would be tricky because some of them are very, very small. Um, so Australia, not a small country at all, a massive country, not quite as big as Canada or Russia, but still pretty big. Um, so if we were going to describe the location of Australia, we could say something like uh, it is in Australasia because that's the continent it's in. We can also say um, it's in the Southern Hemisphere. So if I were to draw a line on my map, here we go, let's try it with my, oh, hang on, that's not gonna work. If I was going to draw a line on my map, I might end up, here we go. Oh no, now the whole thing's zooming out. No, the world became so small. Here we go, let's get back to it. Oh, now I'm just drawing everywhere. It's a nightmare, a nightmare I say. But if we were gonna draw a map across the center, uh, a line, sorry. Whoa, oh no, my computer skills are failing. If we're gonna draw a line roughly along there, uh, it would be better with a ruler, but here we go. Um, if we were gonna do that, we would. that would be the equator, which is the line that goes along the center of the earth. So what we can say about Australia is that it's in the southern hemisphere, which means the southern half, the bottom half, if you're looking at it from the top of the world, which means some people call Australia down under, because to get there from Europe, you have to go down under the equator and you get to Australia. But it's not quite true that everything there is upside down. Oh, brilliant. So uh, Rayhan has asked Siri how many countries there are, and Siri says 195 countries. That's very good. Um, like I say, it's a bit, uh, bit contentious. Some people say they've got countries, and other people say they're not allowed countries, so it gets tricky. Yeah, okay, 195. I can trust Siri. Hmm. Um, now, gravity works um, both uh, on both sides of the equator, thankfully, uh, which is lucky. Now, we can also divide the world up again if we're going to draw another line uh, right through London. Oh no, well I can't do it if I'm gonna do that, can I? If I go right through London here, oh, I missed it, like that. Then we can divide the world into two other halves, our Eastern Hemisphere and our Western Hemisphere. So Australia isn't just in the Southern Hemisphere, it's also in the Eastern Hemisphere, okay. Um, <laughs> of course you can, uh, Unicoaster. Uh, yeah, uh, have, a, have a fiddle, it's all right. Um, now, I must say, these lessons are being recorded. I'm just trying to figure out a way of uh, putting them up and sharing them with everyone. I recorded yesterday's lesson as well, if you did miss it. Um, the only thing is, uh, I cannot have it without seeing some people's faces on the sidebar here. So I'm trying to crop my videos to get everyone's faces out of it so then I can let everyone watch them. So watch this space, they should be up soon. Um, let's have a look. So, Australia in the Southern Hemisphere over to the east and of course it's famous for a lot of things let's get to a, a hundred percent there okay so we're going to have a look first of all at the physical geography here we go now those of you who play minecraft will probably have heard of a biome yeah um a biome is an area of the world that has a, a certain climate oh yeah Alfie has uh, a certain climate um, has certain plants living there, certain, certain temperature. Um, you'll notice, now I'm trying to use my Minecraft knowledge, but in Minecraft you can have like savanna biomes which are nice and uh, grassy. You can have uh, 
rocky biomes? I don't know what biomes I have in Minecraft. Um, in real life, you also get biomes. It's as if the people of Minecraft looked at real life and copied it a bit, but with squares. So these are the main biomes of Australia. And so this map shows us the different kinds of environment that you would be in if you went to different parts of Australia. Now, if we were to look at a map of the UK, the biomes there would be the same. We are the temperate biome. It doesn't matter if you're in Kent or you go up to Yorkshire or even up to Edinburgh or whatever. We're in the same biome. We are in a temperate biome. It doesn't really change very much. Australia, though, is a huge country, which means that it's made up of loads of different biomes. You can go from very different environments uh, to other ones. So if we start at the north here, we can see this nice greeny colour. It's tropical and subtropical grasslands, savannas and shrublands. So that basically means there's lots of nice grass. Yeah, So that's good for animals to live in. It gets, it's slightly more lush and grassy towards the edges uh, and gets slightly drier as we come in, but uh, pretty good. Um, over here, right on the edge, we've got our tropical and subtropical mo moist uh, uh, broadleaf forests, which means that we're verging on rainforest here because we have lots of rain. Um, broadleaf means that the leaves on the trees are nice and wide like ours. Um, in most trees in Britain, unless it's a, a, a conifer, like a Christmas tree, it has pine needles on it, most trees are broadleaf trees. Now down here we have temperate broadleaf and mixed forest, which is very similar to the UK. So if you're in the UK and you know what a forest looks like near you, then this part of Australia is going to be similar. A bit warmer maybe, but similar. Then we come into New South Wales, which is temperate grasslands, savannas and shrublands, which is maybe a little bit drier than the UK, but still pretty familiar. If you look at a picture of New South Wales, um, uh, of the countryside of New South Wales, you might well think that looks a lot like Britain or the actual Wales, the original Wales. Yeah. Um, has anyone been to the original Wales? You know, the first Wales. Maybe that's more likely than having been to Australia. Um, how many bi biomes does Australia have? That's a good question. So let's count them up, shall we? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six that I can count here. Um, hmm. I'm going to say six from what I can count. Hmm. Ah, Thea, you've been to Wales. That's cool. Uh, some people not. Some people have. That's good. Okay. Ah, you've been there. My name is Jeff. Hmm. Good name, Jeff. Hmm. Your brother was born there, Catherine. That's cool. Uh, and Jasper's been to Wales. And Amelia and Benjamin. Oh, that's good. Oh, loads of people have been to Wales. This is good. Okay. So, yes, if you imagine Wales, you can kind of think of New South Wales, but maybe New South Wales would be a little bit warmer with some more interesting creatures roaming around. Not that I'm dissing the creatures of Wales. I mean, I'm sure they're cool and stuff, but maybe not quite as cool as some of the Australian ones. Um, let's have a look over here. Um, here are some facts about the physical geography of Australia. So, oh, here we go. More people. Hello, if you're just joining us, we're having a look at the at the geography of Australia this morning. Um, so, we're going to look at these basic idea, uh, these facts for each country that we look at, so we can build up some kind of idea of who's got the biggest this and who's got the biggest that and all that kind of stuff. So, the capital city of Australia is Canberra. Um, a lot of people think it's Sydney because Sydney is a bigger city, but Australia is one of those countries where the biggest, most important city isn't the capital city. Okay. Um, other good examples are Turkey and of course the USA, Washington in the USA, Washington DC. It's quite a small city. It's nothing compared to Los Angeles or Chicago or New York. So, um, oh, hello again, Unicosta. Um, so Australia is like that. Canberra is uh, the capital city, relatively small. It's still a city, um, not as big as Sydney. Now, the tallest point in Australia is not this thing behind me, uh, Uluru or Ayers Rock. The tallest point is called, bear with me here, got to say this word, Mount, let's see, let's try it with an Australian accent, uh, Mount Kosakuso, Kosakusko, maybe, I don't know. Uh, maybe if I say it really fast, Mount Kosakusko, that sounds legitimate, all right. So that's 2,228 metres tall. Uh, yeah, thank you, I've been, uh, I'm, been working on my Australian, um, uh, which is pretty tall. 
well, well, we'll see some taller mountains for sure um, through through our different countries, but that's that's not bad. Um, uh, th thank you, Lucy. Yeah. Um, now, the biggest lake in Australia is called Lake Eyre, which is nine thousand five hundred kilometers squared. Which, um, if we're going to look at nine thousand five hundred kilometers squared in scientific terms, we're really going to think about what that means. That means really big, like really big. Um, that's the scientific term for that. Um, the bordering countries, the countries that touch um, Australia, there are none. Australia is just one great big island. Well, in fact, it's not one great big island. It has other islands on it. Like if we go back to our map over here, we can see Tasmania down here, chilling out in the south, still part of uh, Australia, um, but uh, not connected to the mainland. Um, so what we get is uh, there's, there's no other countries touching Australia. There are countries near Australia. We could say that New Zealand is very near. Um, uh, oh, hang on. Guys, if we can stop putting the, the O's in the chat, that would be much appreciated because otherwise I just won't be able to keep up with people's questions. Sorry. Um, yeah, that'll uh, drive me quite mad. Uh, yes, I can go back to the biggest lake in Australia. Sure thing. So the biggest lake is Lake Eyre. I'll leave that on the screen for a second. No countries are bordering it. We'll see that some countries have a lot of neighbours, especially when we look at places like Europe. Um, uh, we'll see that you know you can have a lot of neighbours. Africa also, many of those countries are bordering other countries. But Australia, all on its own. Oh, how many times the size of the UK? That is a good question. Um, let's see. Can anyone do me some Google Foo and find out how many UKs would fit into Australia? Uh, that would be, that's a good question, Rock. Um, uh, yeah, I guess like Jane Eyre. Yeah, a rock like Jane Eyre. Yeah. I mean, I assume that it's not quite so person-like as Jane Eyre. But yes, the same, same spelling, for sure. Um, <laughs> I'm just guessing here. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, when it comes to the longest river, we've got the Murray River, which is 2,508 kilometres long, um, full of lovely creatures, of course, uh, that will quite easily and uh, quite happily eat you up. Um, a lot of them will anyway, uh, things like crocodiles and stuff, but we'll come to the wildlife in a second. Ah, thank you very much, Jasper. Australia is about 32 times bigger than the United Kingdom, so we should be able to fit in 32 UKs into Australia. Um, most of them we could just drop down in the in the desert area, which they call the outback, um, and we would never see again. So you'll notice the biggest. Oh, we didn't even mention this biome, did we? The biggest biome in Australia is our desert biome. It's absolutely arid, um, very little rainfall. I mean, the definition of a desert is somewhere that gets less than 10 millimetres of rainfall a year. And that definitely makes up for most of Australia, this huge yellow area. Um, things cannot survive there so well. There are people that live there, but in small numbers. Um, there's only, uh, it, they don't call it the desert in Australia. They call it the outback. Um, and the idea is that it's, well, it's out the back, isn't it, you know? You, it's not out the front, it's out the back, out, away from your house, I don't know. So what you do there is a lot of very nice red hot desert and right in the middle of that red hot desert is this thing behind me, Aluru, a very sacred rock which we'll come on to a, a bit later. Um, there are towns out in the desert, there's a town called Alice Springs um, but it's a very small town. Um, luckily Alice Springs has a spring so it doesn't need to be near a river but most of this area is completely dry and then if we go down here into the southwest of the country it's kind of a Mediterranean feel so if you've ever been to south of France or Spain or Portugal then think of, think of that kind of weather or Greece maybe that kind of climate forest woodland scrub maybe a little drier than your average uh, you know maybe think hot summer in Spain or somewhere like that so, what do they call the desert? They call it the outback, the outback, because it's uh, outback. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know which biome lake our air is in. I'll have a little look for you in a second. Or, or maybe someone else can, can find out with their Google Foo. Um, I'm not sure where lake air is. Let's see it. We can check our map, can't we, and see if it's on there. Do, do. 
if I can get to my map without grabbing my words. Let's see. So here we've got Aluru right in the middle here. We've got Canberra, the capital, which is down here in the southeast. Oh, well, along with two of the other big cities, uh, Sydney and Melbourne there. Here's Tasmania with our cute little Tasmanian devils. Uh, six biomes I counted, uh, uh, Sharina. Um, yeah, six biomes is what I counted, but I don't think we've got Lake Eyre on that map. So yes, if anyone could find out, that would be very good. Uh, you can share it with the rest of it. That's right, Avi Sam. Uh, Sydney is not the capital. It's the biggest city, but it is not the capital city. The capital is Canberra instead. Right, let's uh, let's move it on and let's go and have a look. Oh yes, we'll come to the Opera House, uh, Andrew. Now, we're going to have a look at some animals, some wildlife of Australia. And of course, Australia is pretty famous. Uh, for its wildlife. It's got lots of creatures that can only be found in Australia. Um, so yeah, let's start with our, with, with our four here. We've got kangaroos here, you know, kangaroo. Um, great big beasties that jump around, uh, hop about, uh, they can box each other. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, so Bilal is telling me that Lake Eyre is, a, uh, is in the central south and it's in, oh, I've lost it already. Uh, uh, the lowest natural point in Australia. That would make sense, I guess. So that must be the deepest lake as well as the biggest lake. And it's a wetland in the desert. That's very cool. Um, and it's in central South Oz. Yeah, very good. Thank you, guys. Um, I, too, love kangaroos. They're very, very cool animals. Um, now, up here, we've got another very famous animal. The koala. Um, koala time. Perfect. Now, the koalas, they live in the trees and they eat eucalyptus leaves. And they're just super, super cute. Everyone likes a koala. Um, our other two animals, though, does anyone know which these two might be? We're going to have a look at some more in a second, but can anyone guess? Ah, an echidna. Well done, my name is Jeff. That's an echidna right there. A uh, little, little spiky echidna. You wouldn't want that in your pillow, would you? <laughs> going right through your ears. Um, and a wombat. Excellent. Thank you. Well done, Lucy J. Um, yeah, there's a wombat down here, which is just so cute. I like, I like a wombat. I like a wombat a lot. Um, these creatures, um, some of them, um, like the kangaroo and the koala, are what we call marsupials. Now, those of you, uh, Haruki, you've seen a huntsman spider. That's incredible. I haven't put a picture of a spider up. I'm ignoring the spiders today in the wildlife section. We can mention the spiders. There are spiders. They're really big. They scare me a bit. I'm not putting any pictures up. That's that. I've made a decision. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth, you have arachnophobia. Yes, I've got a bit of mild arachnophobia too. So I think I'm going to do us all a favour, all us arachnophobics, and I'm just not going to put any spiders on the screen. If you want to see Australian spiders, have a quick Google, you know, but I'm not looking at them. Um, and scorpions too, yeah. Um, <laughs> tarantulas, um, do they have actual tarantulas? I'm not sure if tarantulas, uh, I'm not much of a spider expert. I tend not to look too deeply into them, but I've got a feeling that tarantulas are more of a South American thing. Um, there are definitely big hairy spiders, um, but that's maybe not the same thing as the tarantula. I'm not sure how they're, you know, scientifically divided. Um, there you go. <laughs> There's one in the corner of your room right now, Thea. Oh no. <laughs> Run away. Hide under the bed. <laughs> Here we've got another famous Australian creature. This one's the Tasmanian Devils. Oh, did you, Serena? Oh, uh, okay, so if there's seven biomes, that's cool. Okay. Um, ah, yes, and we've got a platypus here as well. So here we've got a Tasmanian devil and a duck-billed platypus. Now, the Tasmanian devil um, is a very... It looks kind of scary, but they're quite small, and um, they're not actually particularly vicious. Um, I believe that the Tasmanian devil might get its name from the fact that Tasmania didn't used to be called Tasmania. It used to be called Van Diemen's Land because the Dutch fella who found Tasmania was called, well, the guy who found it, he named it after his boss, who was Van Diemen. So it was called Van Diemen's Land. And so I guess once they changed the name to, to Tasmania, you've got that demon and that devil idea. And I reckon that's where it might come from. It might just be, though, that this creature is ferocious and they called it a devil because of that. I don't know. Uh, you saw a platypus in the wild, Rebecca. That's amazing. I've never seen a platypus. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen even a, pa a platypus in a zoo. That's very cool. Um, hmm, a wild platypus would be cool. Now, the platypus is a tricky creature because, well, it's a mammal, 
but it doesn't work like other mammals. As you can see, it looks a bit birdy. It's, it's got a beak for a start, or at least a, a, a nose that looks like a beak. Um, it's got the ability to lay eggs, which most uh, mammals don't. Uh, mammals generally they rear their young with inside with inside inside them sorry uh, in the, with their eggs within the womb and then they give birth to live young um, the platypus doesn't the platypus platypus even though it's a mammal gives birth to eggs which means because it's a mammal one of the defining characteristics of a mammal is that it produces milk and so if it's the only animal in the world that can produce both milk and eggs it's the only animal in the world that can make its own omelettes which is quite a cool fact about the platypus now male platypuses also have um little poisonous uh, or venomous i should say oh, i'm not sure there's venomous or poisonous but they've got poisonous spikes on their feet so they're quite dangerous creatures if they want to uh, scrape at you with their poisonous feet yeah they can be a bit dangerous for sure Oh, uh, let's see, Harriet. Are there meerkats? I think meerkats are, re are restricted to Africa. Um, uh, well, a lot of Africa is down under, this is true, but um, we, they don't call it down under, they just call it South Africa instead. Yeah, down under, that's better, Abby. Yep, yep, use the proper accent. We can't just say down under, that's not proper, is it? It's down under. Um, so, it's got these amazing creatures, creatures that we don't see anywhere else on Earth. Um, and of course, there was a bit of a, a scare earlier this year because a lot of Australia caught fire. There were wide forest fires going all over the place. And a lot of animals did suffer in that. A lot of animals died, uh, especially koalas. We heard a lot about koalas on the news and how they were uh, you know, losing their homes and their habitats. Because the thing about a koala it doesn't matter how cutely you dress it up and, and whether you give it a little fire engine or not, it's not very good at putting out fires, um, which is a shame because they're so cute. <laughs> so um, there are more um, animals out there that I haven't got pictures of today. So in the seas and oceans around Australia, there's lots of sharks, including great whites. Um, Australia is home to the largest coral reef on the planet, which means that that's full of all kinds of tropical fish, uh, jellyfish, those scary crown of thorns, starfish that give me the creeps. Um, oh, does do echidnas lay eggs? Let me see. Now, you'll notice I'm not much of a zoologist here. I know my, my geography. I'm not so good at the zoology, but let me see if echidnas, because um, if that's true, then echidnas can also make their own omelettes. <gasps> hmm. Let's see. Do echidnas lay eggs? <gasps> yes. Yes, they can lay eggs. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. There we go. So, oh, and they're also known as spiny anteaters. That's quite clue. Quite, quite cool. There you go. So, yeah, okay. Echidnas can also make their own omelettes if they want to. I mean, the problem is with both... With both um, <laughs> that's that's a good question joshua why would they want to make their own omelets i don't think they do and even though they could provide the milk and the eggs they're not very good at using a mixing bowl so i don't know hmm. oh bandicoots let's see i don't know i think a bandicoot comes from from australia let's find out hmm good question let's find out about the bandicoot where are they Yes, so they live in Australia and New Guinea. Let me bring up a picture of a bandicoot. Um, the only bandicoot I know is called Crash Bandicoot. But I don't think that's that's a real bandicoot. I'll put a I'll put a picture up of Crash Bandicoot next to a real bandicoot, and we can compare the two. Um, here we go. There we are. So there's a real bandicoot, and there's Crash Bandicoot, who's a, who's a computer games character. So I'm gonna say um that this one is the real bandicoot and this one is the computer i mean they've got a similar nose that's about as far as it goes really um on oh, my background is Ayers rock which will come down to or uluru which will come down to in a minute so um yes if they did eat their eggs i suppose that would mean that they were eating their young so no i even though i say they could make an omelette i don't think they're going to make an omelette um i think that would be a bad idea yes um Mm. Um, now there are elephants um, another animal that you see a lot of in Australia but which is not native to Australia 
are camels. In fact, Australia has more camels than any other country in the world, which is weird when you think that camels, well, they come from North Africa, they don't come from Australia at all. But they were brought out to Australia um, during the late 19th century, early 20th century, because there's a massive desert. And so the people who went to live in Australia, uh, the people who took it over, the British um, initially, um, they looked at the desert, they scratched their heads, they said, well, how are we going to cross that? It's a very big piece of outback. Hmm. And so they thought, well, we need an animal that can cross the desert. So they grabbed shiploads of uh, camels and brought them over. And the camels bred, making more and more baby camels. There are cats, Harriet, yes, as far as I know. I'm not sure if cats are native to Australia. I don't think they are, but, but there's certainly many, many cats there now. Um, yes, I'm not sure there's native species of cats. There's no, there's no lions, there's no tigers. Um, I don't think there's any panthers or leopards or anything like that. Um, there are native species of wild dog called dingoes. They come from Australia. Um, but yeah, it's the invasive species, the species from outside that make some of the biggest uh, impact. So Australia has had a bit of a problem with keeping the, ca uh, the, the camel numbers down. Also, rabbits are a terrible thing for Australia. Rabbits don't uh, and don't uh, originate from Australia, but they do eat a lot of uh, uh, of crops. Uh, they damage the the ecosystems, and they're very very difficult to get rid of. So rabbits cause a real problem because they breed like rabbits. Um, now, as far as I know, there's no native species of horse in Australia. There are plenty of horses in Australia today, but no natives. Um, plenty of different species of frogs and toads. They're very common in Australia for sure. Um, why are the rabbits, uh, oh, you have rabbits there, yeah, why are the rabbits there? The rabbits were brought over similarly by the Europeans. When the Europeans went to Australia, they wanted things to eat. They wanted to be able to hunt animals and gobble them up. And rabbits are really good for that because if you have a cage of rabbits, you can keep feeding them and eat a few every now and again and they just keep making more rabbits. So they're, they're a wonderful thing to eat, very easy to look after and, and and they grow very quickly. The unfortunate thing is, as soon as you open just one cage of rabbits, then they're all out rushing around, uh, causing all kinds of problems. And so now Australia is somewhat swamped with rabbits, which for some of you, I'm sure, would be a nice problem to have. Uh, for the Australians, not so great, especially if you're trying to farm and things. Um, there are certainly lots of turtles out there. Anyone who's seen uh, Finding Nemo will know that there are plenty of turtles uh, around the coast of uh, Australia too. Um, can you find goldfish? Well, I assume there must be goldfish there now. Whether goldfish come naturally or not, I don't know. Good question though. Ah. Yes, now if you're a vegetarian, having a, a cage of rabbits like Joshua there um, would be a, kind, a little bit pointless, wouldn't it? Yeah, you wouldn't want to eat a whole cage of rabbits if you're a vegetarian. Um, dolphins. I believe that dolphins do come around Australia, yes. Um, plenty of sharks too. Um, ah, Kit, you've seen a turtle. That's very cool. Um, you'd eat rabbits because it's so uh, tasty. Uh, John, you're telling me about the emu war. Yes, maybe we'll, we'll, we should talk about the emu war in history. Maybe I do like the emu war. Um, uh, maybe we'll, we'll come back around to that if we've got time today. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll save that one in my head. <laughs> Yes. All right. So let's move away from the animals and we'll have a look at the government. So some countries that we look at will have quite a, I can say quite a lot about the government. Uh, we can go into quite a lot of detail about how the government works and stuff. Um, Australia, though, is, I wouldn't say boring because their political uh, climate at the moment is very interesting. But in basic terms, if we understand our own government, then we understand the Australian government pretty well, too. Um, it's a democracy. Um, if we have a look over here, here we are. Um, democracy um, is a country where the people, the people decide who runs the country. And they can sometimes even decide on uh, is specific decisions made within that country. Now, there are other types of government that we'll see um, in two weeks, we'll do China for C. And so we'll look at communism. But with democracy, uh, we have the idea that people get to vote on who's in charge. Now, this means that it's kind of fair because everyone gets a say, or at least the adults. I'm afraid in both this country and Australia, you would not be allowed to vote because you're too young, most of you, unless you're uh, sitting there as a parent or whatever. Um, you've got to be 18 to vote. And the idea is that 
the politicians, the people who want to be in power, will show you adverts and give speeches and you know try and persuade you that they are the ones to go with, and you vote for them and the one that gets the most votes gets to be in charge. So at the moment, this man, Scott Morrison, is the Prime Minister of Australia. Now, Australia is even more similar to us because Australia has our Queen too, because Australia is part of the Commonwealth. Um, I've already mentioned that the British bought camels and things to Australia. Um, Australia just used to be part of Britain or what we call a colony, which means that the people in Australia they speak English, majoritively. There are there are native peoples there, as we'll see in a minute. Um, but they have a, because they have they used to be part of our empire. They still have the uh, Scott Morrison is the prime minister as of uh, uh, of Australia. Um, I'm not sure why they've picked that that age, Rebecca. I'm not sure why they've chosen that age. But most countries in the world go for 18 for voting. Um, some countries are talking about bringing that down to 16. Um, now, if you're minus one, you cannot vote, I'm afraid. Mm. Most countries in the world, most democratic countries, you can vote if you are old enough and if you're not in prison. Those are usually the two rules. Uh, prisoners are not usually allowed to vote because it's been decided they're too naughty to get a stay. You know? um, although that doesn't work in all countries. Sure. Um, so uh, he did not create the shop Morrisons. As far as I know, he didn't know. Um, so Australia... They have a slightly different system to our own. They've got the Queen. They've got a Prime Minister. They've got a government that's made up of different houses where they, they argue or debate, depending on how you look at it, as to see what's made, what, what decisions are made. And the one really big difference that's often pointed out between Australia and Britain is that in the UK, if you don't want to vote or you cannot be bothered to vote in elections, that's fine. You don't have to. No one tells you you have to vote. And that means that, you know, in elections here, we get roughly between 60 and 70 percent of people voting on a good year. Sometimes it can go down to less important elections. It can go down to 30 to 40 percent of the, of the adults vote. A lot of adults just cannot be bothered. Um, in Australia, however, you have to vote. If you do not vote, then you will be fined. It is against the law not to vote. Yeah. So, um, you don't have the choice. Everyone has to have a say, whether you want to say or not. Yeah, so that's a bit of a difference between uh, there and here. Um, there's another difference that I heard the other day as well. Um, well there was an election in Australia. There's been quite a few recently because they keep going through prime ministers. Um, but at the last election, um, to encourage people to go to, to vote, even though it is the law and everyone has to go, to try and make people happier, um, people stand outside election stations with barbecues and they cook sausages and everyone who gets to go and vote gets a free sausage. So maybe not so great for you vegetarians out there. Um, I don't know. But, you know, it would get me voting. If the, if the government said I had to and I got a free sausage, I think I'd be up for that. So there you go. That, in a nutshell, is the government of Australia. We will come back and we'll, we'll talk more about democracy, I'm sure, when we look at other countries and their governments. Now, let's get, uh, uh, let's get numerical here. We're going to have a look at the economy and the development uh, of Australia. Now, in broad terms, there are three different types of country in this world when we talk about development. Um, Ah, Theo, yes, yes, you wouldn't want that kind of sausage. Maybe they could do you like a chicken sausage or something. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, you know, how many different varieties of sausage they do on their free barbecues. Hmm, good, good, good point, though. Not kosher, not kosher at all. Yeah, yeah, or halal, this is true. Um, so, yeah, maybe not, not, maybe not ideal for everyone. <laughs> um, so, there are three main types of countries. We've got uh, developed countries, which are like the UK and Australia will fit into that category. These are rich countries that are pretty uh, healthy. They have lots of good hospitals, schools, roads, trains, all this kind of stuff. Yeah? Um, we've got developing countries, which are the poorest countries in the world. These countries are the ones that don't have enough money. They don't have good healthcare systems. They might not even have enough food or jobs for the people to do. And, you know, a lot of people might be poor and the government itself might be poor. 
And then you've got the third kind of country in the middle called the emerging countries or the emerging economies. These are countries that are somewhere between the two. They're not really poor and they're not really rich. They're moving from poor to rich. So a good example of those countries would be places like Nigeria, China, Brazil. Yeah. Um, now, Australia is very firmly in the developed country category. Um, uh, happy birthday, Thea's mum. No, happy birthday. Um, uh, that means that they are a very rich country. Now, let's have a little look in the chat. Can you give me a guess? Do you think, oh, hello, um, do you think that Australia is richer or poorer than the UK? If we'll use the UK as our guideline, UK being a fairly rich country, do we think Australia is richer or poorer? So we've got poorer, richer, richer, ooh, ooh, poorer. Oh, it's quite, quite balanced. Oh, the ooh. <laughs> oh wow that's, a, that's quite a good uh, some people saying the same some people saying richer some people saying poorer okay that's a good balance um yeah uh, a lot of uh, okay just was going going for richer okay so uh what we can do this isn't a perfect system but there is a way of, of comparing how rich countries are and it's called gdp which stands for gross domestic product which sounds very important. Uh, gross domestic pro product is basically the amount of money that a country makes every year. So if we add up all the money that everyone in that country makes and we put it into a great big pot, that is the GDP of the country, the gross domestic product. Now, that tells us how rich a country is. It doesn't necessarily tell us how rich the people are, though. So what we often do is we take that great big pot and then we divide it by the number of people in the country. Okay, so we've got the GDP, a great big bucket of money. Then we have a look at how many people there are in the country and we divide it up amongst those guys. So yeah, that's what it actually stands for. GDP, gross domestic product. Uh, gross just means overall hugeness rather than disgusting. Well, okay. So in Australia, we add up all the, uh, we add up all the Barbie salesmen and all the, uh, the Foster's drinking, uh, Foster's pub owners and all that kind of stuff. And we add up all their money that they're making. Now in Australia, they, they make a lot of money from things like coal mining. There are a lot, there's lots of coal and oil and gas in Australia um, and other uh, resources they mine. Uh, they make a lot of money from uh, big businesses and uh, tech companies and all kinds of different things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not disgusting domestic product. Hmm, that would be weird. Yeah. Um, so what do we do? We add that up in Australia. If we take the gross domestic product and divide it by the population, then we end up with the average Australian citizen earning 53,799.94 US dollars. So American dollars. Um, per year. That's as of 2017, which is our latest data. So that means that the average Australian is earning 53,000, well, 53.7 thousand dollars a year, uh, which is quite good. Now, the reason we use American dollars is because we always use, oh, USD means you, uh, blah, 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 US dollars, United States dollars. So the idea is, because we want to compare countries to each other, we cannot use their own currency. So Australia does have its own money. It's called the Australian dollar. Um, but if we were con to compare uh, dollars, to Australian dollars to American dollars, to British pounds, to, I don't know, Indian rupees, we would end up with a bit of a mess. It would be very complicated to work out what's going on. So in uh, Aus what we do in geography and what we'll do with all these different countries is we'll always use American money just to just to keep everything the same basically that's just the way it goes um, so this is the Australian US dollars uh, per capita so how much each citizen has on average if we were going to add it out e divide them out equally of course we don't really divide it amount equally but there you go and um, if we compare that to Britain to the UK we'll see that UK is a fair bit lower. We're on 39,720.44 cents um, per person in this country, in my country, in the UK. So, um, uh, oh, the average job in Australia. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know how, how much uh, the average citizen earns in uh, uh, Australia. 
maybe we could find out i don't know yes um yes uh, guys in the chat if if you are uh, if we can try and keep the spamming down please and just just put your things in there when there's a question to ask because otherwise i miss them of course and at the same time stop telling other people not to spam because that would also uh, <laughs> makes me lose the questions too so we'll, we'll try and all uh, just just ask uh, ask questions if you can that'd be way better because then i can yeah get that cool <laughs> now yeah now it has to be said that this number here uh, Rub Ruben, you're saying you're rich. Yeah, we are all rich in the UK. If you live in the UK, you are rich. You know, this $39,000 a year, that's a good amount of money. That, that's not bad. Okay, so don't don't look at this and say, oh, those Australians are richer than us. Um, we're not as rich as them, so we're poor. That's not how it works. Um, we are, both of our countries are some of the richest countries on the planet. Uh, we will look over the next few weeks at some countries which are not so rich and we'll see a stark difference there in many many ways um so australia was starting near the top now someone i did see i saw it went by fast so i didn't see who uh, oh, oh australian sal uh, average salary is forty eight thousand three sixty before tax thank you very much that's very good um is that us dollars catherine i don't um so let's see i did see someone saying that even though they earn more money in australia uh, their cost of living is higher which is quite right so it doesn't necessarily mean because you make more money that you're better off because if you make more money but everything in your country costs more money then of course you know it, it earns out as basically the same so i know that things in australia do cost more money if you want to go to to the restaurant and have some food it's going to cost you more in australia than it will in the uk um much like if you're someone from the uk you know things are generally more expensive in london uh than they are in other cities and towns around the country if you are in the north of the country like i am and then you go down to the south things are generally more expensive especially in london um now to counterbalance that people in london generally get paid more money because they're in london they they're doing you know better paid jobs generally not always um so they, they need you know it works out as about the same they're, they're making more money but things are more expensive whereas in the poorer parts of the country um people aren't earning as much money but things are cheaper so you kind of get some kind of balance there so australia even though people have more money they are having to spend more money to get what we would get here uh the massive benefit you have in australia of course is that the weather's nice yeah has nothing to do with money that though so that's our economy and development in a nutshell if we're going to take anything away from that they are a very rich country and per capita gdp they are richer than us uh, or at least the people in the uk so um melanie if you could uh, cut out the uh, <laughs> the, the random case that'd be great thank you <laughs> all right let's have a look at the culture then now, Australian culture is divided up into loads of bits. I mean, we could pretty much do an hour each day on just the culture of different countries. But what I want to do here is just provide a bit of a snapshot of, uh, that's fine, you can take a break. Uh, my name is Jeff, no problem at all. Um, I want to give a, a snapshot to some of the cultural things within that, these countries. So we're going to start with the traditional culture of Australia, something that I haven't really mentioned yet. Now, I have mentioned that the British came and they took Australia and um, they did this uh, when was Captain Cook 1730s I believe uh, Cook came to Australia um, now Australia was, was, was discovered now the British uh, first of all the Dutch found parts of it they found Van Diemen's Land Tasmania but then Captain Cook came along and found the rest of it you know to be honest it is quite big so surprising it took as long as it did but there you go um, now when they discovered it they also they discovered that it's a brilliant place to be um, but originally you know even though they discovered it there were loads of people living there already people have been living there for as far as we can tell thousands of years and these are what we call the aboriginal peoples they don't call that them that themselves there's many different tribes and groups and ethnicities within that but we traditionally call them aboriginal people which means the original people of australia now they have their own distinct culture um they have uh, when cook arrived they were living in a very different way from uh, the europeans the europeans had huge ships that can sail across oceans they had guns they had uh, clothing made out of you know bits of metal they had uh, all this kind of technology and you know compasses uh, what those things called the pirates look through 
I don't know. I'm thinking of Captain Cook. Um, the Aborigines, they didn't have any of that stuff. Aborigines never developed, if we talk about development from the big ages, which there's a telescope, yeah, thank you, or spyglass, yeah, good, good. Um, ah, you've done, oh, that's cool, Willow. I love doing Aboriginal art. Um, when you did it at school, did you do it with dots, with your fingers? Um, hello, my name is Jeff. Um, that's it. <laughs> I might be thinking of Pirates of the Caribbean, this is true. <laughs> Ah, yes, now there are bake, there is a bake one in Australia, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, ah, we did it with Q-tips, that's cool, yeah, that, that's good, that's a good idea, yeah. Um, so the Aboriginal people, technically, still in the Stone Age, because they never developed iron or, or bronze, but that doesn't really mean that, you know, they're not as developed as other people, it just means they don't have the same resources. So the Aboriginal culture is very, very different from the European culture. It's one of the most... Uh, standout cultures on earth. Um, just to give you some basic idea, Aboriginal peoples, generally speaking, and again there's lots of different groups of Aboriginal so it's hard to put all this together, but Aboriginal peoples often don't have any concept of time, of you know last year, yesterday, tomorrow. Instead everything is different versions of now, which is a really hard thing for us to think about when we've grown up in a world where there is distinction between tomorrow and yesterday and all that kind of stuff yeah so aboriginal peoples they live in the very much now so you know what happened to your great grand granddad is he dead no he's not dead he's just around in a different place right now yeah time works differently um the art works differently um Traditional Aboriginal art is made up of lots of dots and swirls, usually showing natural world, usually having a lot more meaning in them than you would look at. Just, you know, you might look at a picture like this and just see that it's pretty. It's got loads of cool colours. But um, often Aboriginal art is telling a story. The shapes and the patterns, the way they flow, the way they move is trying to tell a whole story rather than just showing a picture. Um, ah, the lizard of life. Very cool. Um, so... Uh, John, that's a good question. What is the time difference in the UK and Australia? Now, Australia is ahead of us. It depends which part of Australia. I think it's got several time zones because it's quite wide. Um, but it's certainly ahead of us. So um, in Australia, oh, let me think. I have an Australian student. I teach a lesson at 10. He joins at 7. So that's nine hours ahead. At least he is. So there you go. We're talking somewhere like nine hours ahead. Um, depending on what part of Australia you're in. Good question. Um, so our Aboriginals, they make these beautiful bits of art. Now, one of the most sacred places to the Aboriginals is this rock behind me here called Aluru. Um, it used to be called Ayers Rock, but that isn't the traditional name. That's a name that the, the British gave to it. The traditional name given by the Aboriginals who live near the rock is Aluru. And as you can see, it's pretty tall. This is a, a comparison with how high this rock is compared to you know, some of the famous buildings. There's Big Ben in the UK, pretty small. The Great Pyramid, not so good. Statue of Liberty, tiny baby. Uh, Eiffel Tower, nearly there, but not quite. Um, and uh, our Sydney Harbour Bridge in Sydney, of course, nowhere near. So it's a huge, massive rock. It's, it's weird. I'm, I'm never quite sure why they call it a rock and not a mountain, but it, it is technically a big rock. Um, it's a weird place as well because it's right in the middle of a very flat desert. You know, there's not loads of hills and mountains around it. It's flatness, 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 massive rock. And, you know, it's just one of those weird geological features. Now, the Aboriginals, they or many Aborigines, they count it as a sacred place, a place where the gods live or the spirits. And so it used to be that, you know, British people and Westerners would march all over the thing and sort of scratch bits into it and knock it about. But now recently it's been given back to the Aboriginal peoples and, you know, people are trying to respect it a bit more, not to climb up and down it all the time. I, I think something like 36 people have died throughout uh, the last hundred years climbing it because it can be very dangerous. Yeah, that's the rock behind me. Yeah, there's a Luru behind me there. I am speaking to you today from the outback right in front of a Luru. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, if we move aside from traditional culture, um, uh, like I say, we could, we could do a whole thing about the Aboriginal peoples, but I think we'll just... Uh, We'll try and look at some culture that you might be more familiar with, at least. Um, here we've got uh, soap operas. That's something that, at least in the UK, we know uh, uh, Australia for. You might well watch one of the Australian soap operas, uh, Neighbours, Home and Away. Um, these are very, very long-running things. Does anyone watch these programmes 
or you know for all i know actually they might have taken them off tv years ago and i just didn't notice but uh, lisa does not um oh cool that's good for you your mum does okay no no emphatic no from josh <laughs> i have never watched a soap opera since elizabeth <laughs> oh, come on guys you get to see the the fun antics of uh, a local group of australian guys and girls as they go through their struggles and turbulent love lives i guess <laughs> okay all right we've got we've got no australian soap fans out there um now you might be a fan of music um this is kylie minogue who is may, maybe a bit old now i don't know if she's very popular anymore but she's one of the biggest stars in australia i can prove that because when you write in uh, onto google australian music stars she's one of the first names that comes up so yeah uh, her and acdc who I don't know. You might have heard of uh, uh, Kylie Minogue. <laughs> Ned Kelly, he is famous. Okay, we've got, we got people who, who've heard of Ned Kelly. All right. So, yeah, here's Ned Kelly, um, a famous Australian outlaw. He's famous. I mean, really, he was a horrible guy. He, he's one of, those, you know, one of those things where sometimes villains get famous uh, on their own. Uh, but he was basically a, a robber and a bit of a murderer, murdery kind of chap. Um, but he famously made himself a, a face mask out of iron to stop bullets. Um, and he went down in a blaze of glory trying to fight the police or at least the, the outback guards. Uh, so he's a bit of a national hero. He represents to, to lots of Australians, Ned Kelly represents freedom and you know living it doing it for yourself out in the wild you know wearing a great big metal face mask yeah makes it hard to eat a sausage when they give it to you for free when you're voting but there you go <clears throat> i don't know that's a good question did he inspire batman i don't know he was a bit of an outlaw he was a bit of robin hood i don't think he's quite as good as a as a batman though now one of the most famous songs uh, from Australia, traditional songs that you might have heard. It's called Waltzing Matilda. Has anyone heard the song Wilt Waltzing Matilda? Uh, I would sing it, but you know, I, I respect you people too much to sing at you. Um, yeah, well, some people have heard it. Okay, that's good. Alfie has not heard that one. No, no. <laughs> um, so Waltzing Matilda is a song that's kind of a nice traditional song. It's kind of got a nice melody to it, um, but it's a song about hanging someone uh, for stealing a sheep. So the whole song is about a guy next to a billabong, which is a lake, a small lake, um, who steals a sheep, then gets caught, and then gets hanged until they die. So there you go. A lovely traditional folk song that's a bit grim. Mm -hmm. um, also, if we go to Australia, we can see some very famous sites. So here's one of the famous landmarks of Australia. This is the Sydney Opera House, which, as the name suggests, is a big house where they do opera in Sydney. Hmm. And the Sydney Opera House is home to loads of different operas. Um, you know, famous opera singers and artists, they come from all around the world to play and put on shows in the Opera House. So it's a pretty cool place to be. And that's probably the most uh, obvious or the most well-known maybe uh, landmark in Australia. Because of course, um, you know, every country has its landmark that people you know think of when they think of that country maybe for the uk it's big ben oh you've been there aria that's very cool um it's not floating no it's built out into the harbor that's a good question um laura it's not floating it's been built out on a you know great big concrete jetty i guess um but it is right out uh, through the harbor there this is where the ship's coming we can see the ship there so it's right in the harbor so and it all lights up at night and you know it's a really nice, romantic, beautiful place to be. So I've heard. I've not been there myself. But, yeah. <laughs> um, and then we've got Bondi Beach, which is probably one of the most famous beaches in the world. Um, full of happy holiday makers, people who go there to sunbathe. And yeah, you know, um, it, it's a cool place to be. If you want to be a cool dude, go to Bondi Beach in Australia. Hmm. Oh, you've been there, Haruki. That's very cool. <laughs> Excellent. Huh, cool. Uh, yes, and of course, because it's the Southern Hemisphere, you can have Christmas on the beach because uh, the seasons work the other way around to the UK. So in Australia, summer is winter here. So at the moment, we're going into spring in the UK, which means that in Australia, they're going into autumn. So it's starting to get colder in Australia. Although for most of Australia, especially the desert, it never really gets cold at all. Hmm. All right. So that was a whistle-stop tour of Australia. Uh, like I say, as... as 
if you want to build up, we're going to look at a different country, starting with a different letter every week. So next week, we're going to have a look at B. Um, I'm going to put up a, 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 a question-y thing on Facebook. I don't really understand how Facebook works. But I'm going to put up a thing, and I'm going to put up some options for countries for next time. It's either going to be uh, Belgium, Botswana, or Brazil. So, you know. Have a think, decide which one you'd like to go, Botswana, Belgium or Brazil, and we'll do that one. Whichever one gets the most votes, we'll do next time. Okay. Um, also, I will be putting up a template, a fact file that you can fill in for each country. I've done one for the kings and queens as well. Um, so you can use those to, you know, if you want to keep all this together over the next few weeks, then yeah, go ahead. All right. Thank you very much then, guys. It was wonderful to see you all. Um, please let me know if you if you have done any amazing work. Thank you for those of you who sent me work from History Estate. I, I enjoyed very much looking at that. Um, and I'll share a bit of that hopefully next time, next time on a Monday. But if you do do anything that you'd like to share, please let me know and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Adios.